I am recording this soundtrack during the UK's lockdown due to the coronavirus and I just want to wish everyone the very best and stay safe. Hi and welcome to Bananas by Rail, a look at post-World War II banana traffic. The fascinating full history of banana imports deserves a video all of its own, so this video can only be a potted history. Check out this web link for more. I'll put a link to this and all relevant links in this video's description box. In the 1920s and 30s the traffic had been growing steadily, but World War II saw an end to it as the Ministry chose to import other citrus fruits instead. Soon after the war the traffic started again. Special wagons, vans had been built that were both insulated and steam heated. Many might be unaware of this fact. The bananas were picked from plants, not trees, in the Caribbean, while still green, each flowering head, which bears around 6 to 9 clusters, or hands, of between 10 and 20 bananas on each. These stems were cut by hand, washed and loaded to one of the banana boats, operated by fifes and elders. And from 1953, geese as well, notably to its Lingfield depot in Surrey. The ships had special refrigerated holds. Once the bananas arrived at the docks, we'll look at Southampton, they were initially unloaded by hand and into waiting rafts of wagons. By kind permission of ssmaritime.com, you are now seeing some photos of SS Tilipa, the Fife ship, and others involved in the banana trade. Other ports such as Avonmouth, Bristol, Hull, Southampton, Garston, Liverpool and Preston, Lancashire as well as steamships to London docks were used. At the end of hostilities and following pleas from the colony to the ministry, the first shipment from Jamaica containing 10 million bananas on the five ship SS Tilipa docked at Avonmouth in December 1945. More bananas were imported from the Windward Islands, Dominica, Grenada, St Lucia and St Vincent. This group of islands is around a thousand miles closer to the UK than Jamaica. Later a mechanical lift moved the banana stems from the hold of the ships up to the waiting dockers who still loaded them into wagons by hand. These wagons as mentioned were insulated and steam heated but they also had to be strawed whereby the floor was covered in a thick layer of straw to protect the fruit. The heating and insulation allowed the bananas to begin ripening on their journey to the ripening sheds, such as at East Croydon near London, or direct to the wholesalers. Fife's had many small outlets. For instance, there was a small shed at Warminster in the yard. Some of the traffic from Southampton went via Bristol to the Midlands and North West. Meanwhile, Geest had a large depot at Lingfield in Surrey. An amazing photo comes with permission from PLA Collection Museum of London showing workers loading bananas to some northeastern wagons at West India docks circa 1935 at the north quay of the export dock. Maybe the bananas had arrived on the steamship Eros which sailed into London's docks. The destination of the wagons is lost in the mists of time. On arrival the wagons were swept out and the straw burned and a careful eye was kept out for any tropical spiders or snakes that had come with the bananas. The first consignment after the war to arrive at Southampton needed 480 wagons to transport them to their destinations. Later still bananas were imported from the Canary Islands. With this ever increasing traffic British Railways set about building more dedicated banana vans. There is even evidence that at times of shortages, converted insulated meat wagons were used. The original steam banana vans were vertically planked on all sides with no vents. Later wagons were steam piped in that the steam could be passed to older steam heated vans through them. From 1954 the ventilators on those railway vans fitted with them were removed and the apertures sealed up and, as the vehicles passed through the workshops, the branding STEAM was removed from all the vans. From 1956, the steam controls on individual vehicles were also removed. Looking at the available models, no manufacturer has given us anything resembling the older vehicles that were running from pre-grouping days to the mid-50s. Instead, they have all opted for the original moulding used by Wren in the 1960s, that being the BR1959 
plywood and corrugated end vans. Apart from one brave attempt by Greyfar back in the 1970s. Here it is correctly vertically planked on its sides, but sadly the ends were still corrugated and there were even vents, which is wrong. Also it's presented in the attractive but never used yellow livery many of us love. Or was it? I have been in touch with Fife's who were really helpful and you are seeing some of the photos they sent with permission to show you now. They said in fact that their rail wagons were in the livery scene on the Wren wagons as seen here, but were unable to say when or how many. My conclusion is that there may indeed have been one or two vans painted up like this for publicity or for display at one of their depots, but it was very much the exception. Perhaps more annoying, if we're trying to be prototypical, are some of the Daypole vans sold as Great Western Steam Banana vans, or indeed North Eastern and Midland vans, so pre-1948, yet they are all in fact the 1959 BR standard version. Just totally inaccurate, let's hope this is corrected soon. Nonetheless we can create a 1959 train using ready to run vans, and form them up into rafts, 10 vans each which were combined into one train. Here is a class 24, they are on loan to the southern region, with an empty train of vans heading for the docks and loading. Hmm, but it's really bugging me that we can't have more accurate banana vans from earlier days. So I acquired a couple of these Backman non-vent vans, not that common these days. As you can see they are correctly vertically planked and have no vents, but sadly they do have corrugated ends. Nonetheless, with some new transfers and numbers, we can convert them into some 1953 built banana vans so at least I can show you the early type, which would have been formed up into later trains. Here is a picture of the correct type at the Bluebell Railway in Sussex. Another wagon that was used at times of shortages was the BR meat wagons, converted inside for banana traffic, but still in their white livery, or what remained of it. I've seen a photo at Southampton of this type of van being used, I can't show you it due to copyright and Southampton Museum's lack of response. So what of the operations at the docks once the ship arrived? Well firstly the wagons were divided up into 10 wagon rakes, 
Here of course is a USA tank 30071 doing the shunting duties. Then they were shunted over the waybridge empty apart from the straw before being taken to the dockside to be loaded with bananas. Initially on the stem as described but from the late 1950s in cardboard boxes marked tropical packed bananas. The wagons were then recombined into rafts of wagons usually 20, 30 or 60 wagons long but there is even a suggestion that as many as 70 were sometimes run. Banana trains were always assured of a clear road and would use powerful express locomotives to haul them. Here Battle of Britain class 34051 named Winston Churchill has been rostered for the duty and she will draw the train out of the docks and onto the main line heading towards London. In the late 1950s a new British Railway standard 12 tonne capacity insulated banana van was designed in conjunction with the trade to reflect their new requirements. This van was more heavily insulated than previous designs and was not steam heated although it was fitted with a through steam pipe so it could run with older vans. steam heat pipes were removed from all banana vans from 1963. During the 1960s the banana trade's use of rail transport steadily diminished due to the changing distribution requirements and the increased efficiency of road transport following changes in road regulation. 
This saw the withdrawal of many of the pre-nationalised vans. The final move by rail was made in 1979, rendering the last 17 operating banana vans redundant. I hope you have enjoyed that look at bananas by rail. What a fascinating story it makes with so many people and transport methods coming together to provide us with a simple but tasty fruit. Oh, stop there. Really, they are berries.